I'd love to, I'm, I'm pleased to announce um, uh, the next speaker, Dr. Hood, giving a plug for his conference coming up, the Culturally um, Responsive Evaluation and Assessment. <laughs> there you go, free publicity. He is the um, founding director of that center at University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And most recently, in which is, um, he has been fo focusing on issues of social justice and um, cultural context in educational assessment program evaluation and technology, which is why I was begging him to come give this talk. So here you go. thank you for coming. You'll pay for this later. I know. <laughs> I'll have to drink the whole thing. Right? Yeah. How am I supposed to advance this? <laughs> I'm not just uh, this, this with the. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Just. just hey, I'm not a morning person. Y'all should know that. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to get through here. I had every intention of coming to this conference in a very cheerful mood. Of, <laughs> Admittedly, I don't have the uh, technical skills and uh, understanding about gaming and technology, but I've been fortunate to work with some pretty smart people in these areas uh, over the past 15 years or so, not to mention some uh, pretty stellar folks in our assessment and evaluation who've been uh, friends, collaborators, and colleagues, and some of them are here. Um, and particularly to have the opportunity to be with uh, our elder, Ed Gordon, who's not here yet, but I think is supposed to be here. Uh, has he came in? Yeah, okay. Came in. Oh, hey, Ed. <laughs> uh, so it was, uh, who continues to amaze me with his uh, wisdom and clarity at the age of 94. Uh, so, but, so, but I was not also not thinking about preparing any particular formal remarks uh, for, this, for this conference. I had, um, my cheerful frame of mind really started to shift a bit a couple of weeks ago at a conference in New Orleans um, looking at the, um, the question around whether the ex New Orleans experiment uh, in post-Katrina era was working in the privatization of its schools um, and if it should be actually applied to other major troubled school districts. Uh, the consensus of the activists, educators, organizers, researchers, and community activists, and participants from teams from 12 other cities, and other educational researchers uh, from across the country, including past President Joyce King, AERA President Joyce King, is that this experiment has been a failure. Further, the publicized information that academic achievement in New Orleans public schools and their students has improved is viewed to be myths and half-truths based on inappropriate testing, reporting, interpretation, misuses of, assessment, of state assessment data. For some reason, I kept hearing in the back of my mind uh, the lyrics from a uh, 1970s uh, poet, activist, uh, songwriter, Gil Scott Heron, uh, that sometimes they tell lies and put them in a truth of disguise. And if they really knew the truth, why would they tell you? Um, OK. Uh, seem like smoke and mirrors have seemingly been used in the context of assessment in Louisiana and may be in the truth of disguise. For example, consensus from the panel that I served as chair and discussing, uh, consensually agreed that folks had been juking the stats uh, to argue success of the experiment. Once again, we witness more evidence of the traditionally disenfranchised continue to be disenfranchised in another generation and the wasting of more talent for our future to a society lost in the school to prison pipeline. My thoughts about wasting talent in the post-Katrina era for some reason turned me back to a conversation I was having with my friend uh, Drew Katomer uh, at AERA, which was supposed to be a social event, uh, that social activity that we were having at the end of the day, and it ended up morphing into a conversation about big data and the talent that we were wasting in our um, penal institutions. Uh, I've been collaborating with Drew on a number of things and conversations around assessment in the, in the context of culture, as well as with another colleague, Juan Gilbert, uh, at the University of Florida, who directs the Human Experience Research Lab there now. So I do not believe that I need to really 
say very much about these two tables, these next two tables, uh, requiring a narrative. The first is our national picture. You will note that the number of African Americans and Latinos incarcerated males doubles from 18 to 19, and then from 20 to 24. The second table, just a simple comparison looking at those incarcerated in Illinois and in California. Uh, I think those data also speak for themselves. Uh, a couple of little interesting things you might note later. And so I turn to our slide, our, our colleague A. Wade Boykin in his commission paper uh, in the, few, um, in the uh, Gordon Commission, for the Gordon Commission, argues that the success of our traditionally understood students in the classroom and their performance in high stakes testings is a social justice issue. Wade points out and say, in their present form, these assessments do not allow the abilities and propensities of certain groups to be accurately or adequately ascertained. We need to determine how such assessments can more fully dis truly discern the performance capabilities of certain groups without undermining the psychometric qualities of these instruments. This will not be an easy task, but it certainly must be done. So, I'm compelled to ponder and ask these questions, and these are the questions I'm going to have on my mind. I'm not going to read them to you. I'm just going to allow you to read them. Uh, and I'm reminded of the comments that uh, our colleague, friend and colleague, Gloria Latson Billings, made at her Social Justice Action Committee Award address at AERA. And she said, we know we are not really only talking about social justice. It's really just about justice, do or do not. There is no try. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.